So this clip of Fear of Vaughan getting spoken to in 2011 or 2019, sorry, I just saw this on the Final Kids sub. I think this is really interesting because I feel like there's a lot of like revisionist history going on with Theo and Brendan because I've always said I felt like when King and His Thing started, it was probably the best platform. No, it was probably the best representation of Brendan that existed before then because I feel like just before King and His Thing started, I feel like that's when the kind of hate train for Brendan was also revving up. People started to notice how much of a douchebag he was, how thin-skinned he was, how inable, un unable he was to kind of, you know, um, to, to to laugh at himself and shit, to be ridiculed and shit. Everything was amazing. He was a beast of a dad, beast of a guy, blah, 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 blah. But then when Theo used to come on the fire and a kid, the whole reason why King of the Sting started was because him and Brendan would kind of go back to back, you know, back and forth, sorry, um, ripping each other. And then that kind of led into ma them making their own show, King of the Sting. Um, and of course, you know, it went to do what it went to do, and then obviously Fear left. But that was the one show where you got to see Brendan get ripped into pieces because early episodes of King and the Sting, Fear was brutal. He didn't really know Brendan too well. Um, Brendan would be laughing at everything he was saying, uh, and he just would go, and and he would see Brendan kind of get ripped into, it, and it kind of made people, you know, look. Oh, okay, cool. He can at least laugh at himself for a little bit. So I kind of enjoyed it, but this guy didn't like it and he let Theo know in 2019 I think his name is John F Fusco or something I remember this guy I think his name is like I forgot this guy's name I think it's like Gregory or or George and I think it's like Corey I think his name's Corey or something I remember this guy because I used to do his fitness program he had like a fitness thing and I remember I think he's well known for doing like um lunges he does like one lap of a fucking of a track and field track doing lunges and that's really works really well for your abs and your core i remember doing that i remember buying knee pads and literally going to my park and doing fucking lunges up and down the fucking park like a fucking psycho so i remember this guy and his podcast i don't know if you know if he still does it but this is from 2019 and this guy here is named john F fosco john fasco whatever his name is and he basically has some very um, stern words for Theo about Brendan and about what he thinks of the King and the Sting show when it was still on. We do. So, so you you got a, you got a new show with with uh, Shout, right? King yeah, yeah we Sting. got a new show, King and the Sting. Yeah. So, so I'm flying solo here. Uh, I've listened to two episodes. They're really funny. They're really yeah. good. Thanks, man. Uh, I'd say ninety percent of the reason it's really good is you, right? <laughs> and I feel like when you're hitting punchlines. He pops the balloon purposely. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, you think? I know. No, I know because when someone's rolling and, and <laughs> shit, Sean. listen. Shit, and when, wow. Listen, listen. He, he right down straight, the no, straight, straight talk. I'm speaking for my own. Not yeah, no, it's fine. When someone's ro when rolling, obviously as a listener, you can feel it. And I know when you're setting up that joke about that boy back home and then boom, like his word will just cut it off and it'll, it'll take away your ability to, to drop the hammer and Boom, yeah. you know, and do that gender neutral haircut deal. Oh, yeah. You, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, so that so right that there. GNC, baby, that gender neutral cut. <laughs> yeah. So that right there is, is, is competition. So it, you're what? a smart guy. You're probably aware. But that dude, you guys may be partners because he's got a good following. You got a good following. But that dude wants to outshine you every show. Straight talk wireless, brother. Right. Every show. Level. I don't give a fuck who it makes uncomfortable. Brendan's uncomfortable because you are fucking no, funnier than him. Well, he may be, but but he... no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if he is. Right. But what I'm saying is, he, here's a bad look for Theo Vaughn and all the hard work he's put in. So you got a new show. If this dude kept keeps stepping on you, if he does theoretically, when you're dropping those fucking hitters, that's gonna make the listener say like. Man, yeah, I listen to the show for Shaub Be because your your greatness is being <laughs> is being kind of pushed on because you're allowing it. Mm. You're allowing it. Yeah. Sure, he may be doing it, but you could stop it. You're a man. It's not like a, a fist fight's gonna happen, Jesus. but yeah. a serious talk can. And then the show becomes better for the listener because you're fucking funny. But if I can't hit feel your punchline, yeah, man, I'm a I'm gonna check out another podcast. Yeah, no, well, look, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. I mean, and I'll keep tabs if I feel like that that occurs, you know. Uh, I mean, there's moments where, like, the other day I went in there and I was not feeling good and I didn't want to do anything. And Brendan is, like, extremely charming. A lot of people tune in. You know, he's, like, this kind of big, like, lovable kind of, you, you know, character. And, and people love him, you know. And so I was grateful 
that day for his energy because I needed it to get through the episode. Yes, and I was just so grateful. That's a good that. partnership. Yeah, I don't want to dog him. I was just using that as an no, example. no, no, and I and I respect it. I think. Look, too I'll, late, mate. Too late. I don't want to dog him. Too late, my friend. Anyways. I think this guy's being unfair. I don't think he was a fan of Brendan from before. I think, like um, I think Brandon said, or somebody said here, Brendan, I think, said here. Who said it? Someone said, it's weird to have such strong opinions on the show only two episodes in. My personal thing with this, which I don't understand, is that I remember in the early parts of the show, Brendan was getting ripped on the front of the kid for subreddit. I remember when Keenan Singh saw because I was part of the sub at the time. People were saying, as a criticism, that Brendan wasn't sharp enough to kind of hit back. He just kept repeating Theo's jokes. So I don't even know what that guy is talking about. Like, Brendan would never kind of step on a joke. He'd kind of let just Theo run and get at him and then just repeat the punchline back and kind of laughed. Kind of the stuff that he does now, he kind of just parrots a joke. But then over time, he kind of got, you know, his own little rippings and his own little fucking disses that he had. And he was able to kind of fire back at Brendan. But I thought the early episodes were actually pretty decent, especially when the set was like yellow and black, like kind of like Bumblebee sort of color. I thought Brendan did fairly okay on them. Then as the show went on and they stopped doing the King and the Sting like thing where they started ripping each other and it just turned into a podcast, that's when it sort of started to become a bit shit. But when they were actually making it like a show, they had people, um, you know, be, was it Rape My Drip? They had people sending in pictures of their fucking aunts and their mums and saying if you'd bang them and shit. All that stuff was quite funny. It kind of worked really well, to be honest. Obviously, Theo made the show, but I think this guy's being unfair in his early criticism of fucking Brendan. But... One thing is interesting. Theo kind of already said two episodes in or whatever this was, he was kind of not feeling it. So Theo was always, because people were saying on a sub, again, that sub is fucking amazing, right? Because those guys were calling it from the beginning that Theo was going to leave. And I think Theo was already in 2019 kind of over it after a few episodes. He just went along with it because if you remember early on, as much as Theo is a legend and does things on his own, you have to also give not you have to give Brendan a tiny bit of credit because Theo going on the fire and the kid and getting guest of the year and coming on all the time and having those viral clips of himself on the show, going back and forth with Brendan or ripping into Brian Callan or him and Chris D'Elia, that actually made him famous and kind of helped his career along. So maybe he just felt he kind of owed Brendan because he kept he kept having him on the show that eventually led to his own podcast and shit. So you can understand why he didn't pull the plug earlier on. You know, he just kind of stayed there. But it is it interesting to see that even in 2019, Theo was having doubts about the King of the Sting. Fucking crazy. What are you guys saying in the chat about this? Um, you guys are saying what? This guy reminds me of Sean McCorkle, says Koyla. Yeah, exactly. Very good point. Crazy stuff. Exactly. Brendan says that. Uche is saying this dude must have been a homeless cat long before cats permeate. <laughs> exactly. The OG episodes of Cats was the only time that show was really funny. Exactly, Uche. Yeah. It was actually pretty good. That original set when it was yellow and black, um, cat, you know, doing the fucking social media and the questions, chin and that all involved. It was actually a decent show. They put some effort into it. It was actually well done. But then over time, it just turned into a podcast. That's when they got shit. Um, the guy is a true CEO of Chang's, flaunt my aunt. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it, Uche. Flaunt my aunt. Um, what's he saying is Brenda took away from the momentum and rhythm. No, that's for sure. We know that's a fact, but I think his criticism of his criticism of Thingamajiggy, of Brendan, is more accurate now. Like that, what he's saying now is more representative of Brendan now, not how he was in the past, in my personal opinion. What's, Mc, what's that, Mr. Shaq what are you saying? I'm still laughing, I guess you're trying to pretend the reason he turned off the camera, and it was because he had allergies and needed to blow his nose from the allergies. What? Bro, like, anyway, this, this whole fucking narrative that exists on the chat that every time I blow my nose up because I've got fucking coke or ket up there is fucking bizarre to be honest but you know what let it run let it run I'm actually you know I may do I may actually lean into it one day I'm going to come on stream I'm just going to before I start I'm going to cover my face in flour and I'm saying it now on stream saying what I'm going to do and people are going to come on stream and be like, oh my god you do, you got something on your nose and I pretend I'm, and I'm going to pretend I, I, I don't see it I'm going to do that actually because this is hilarious like you guys legitimately think I could do a stream and be doing fucking lines at the same time like it doesn't work like that <laughs> it doesn't work like that but hey um you know let's just let's just get the narrative going it's fun to have little narratives you know what i mean oh he's late because he's fucked up you know he's blowing his nose because he's the crackhead or something. i like it because i want to be a rock star anyway you know i want to be fucking iggy pop you know that's what i want to be you know i want to be fucking um you know yeah 
the lead singer of fucking Queens of Stone Age, you know what I mean? I want to be in the Strokes, you know, back in the early 2000s, you know what I mean? That's what I want to be. I want to be a rock star. So if you guys think I'm out here doing the drug ass, you know, fucking the prostitutes, being a menace in the streets, I'll take that. I'll take it. <laughs> Even though my actual life is fucking horrible, right? <laughs> my life is boring day to day. I'll take that. If you guys think I'm out here fucking in the streets being a menace, you know, drug walking, loads of unsuspecting fucking women, men, cats and dogs, I'll take it, bro. I'll take it. Because that makes me look way better. I'm going to take that shit. Um, let's move on. What are you guys saying, yeah? Like Lindsay Lohan have, leaving the party. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you remember that Uche? That famous picture. Uche knows, man. Her in the pumps. Her whole feet. I don't even know how much. But imagine. Lindsay Lohan back, back in the day must be rich. But I don't. That must have been like a brick. She must have had like a literal brick of coke in the bathroom when she left that party. Because her feet looked like she was swimming in fucking cocaine. It was fucking amazing. Yeah, exactly, Kilo. I go with the Bobby Brown jaw. Yeah, you know. I'm just out here having a good life, you know, having a good life. 